Good day to you, ladies and gentlemen. I trust that all is well in your neck of the woods. My name is Alan Simpson, and the title of my presentation is Urban Forestry, Shining New Light Through Old Windows by Choreographing Creative Responses to the Current Crisis in the Quality of Urban Life and Environment, and apologies for the rather long title. Presentation will consider three things. What are the key crisis issues in the often poor quality of contemporary urban life? What is urban forestry? And how is it shining new life through old windows to choreograph creative responses to confront these issues? 20th century is the urban century. The UK first became urban for the first time in 1851. Uh, the World Health Organization reckoned that the world became predominantly urban in 2008, and by 2050, there will be an additional 2.4 million people in the world, covering an area of some 1.2 million uh, square kilometers. Migration to cities will have significantly increased due to climate change, making parts of some countries, some continents, indeed some cities, uninhabitable. Last time we had a major uh, expansion of urban areas, the quality was not all that good and as we know life expectancy in, in Victorian cities was not high. You were lucky if you got to be 30 years of age, so you had a lot to fit in before you actually passed away. Some folks were very disturbed about this, particularly the Quaker philanthropists, uh, and they did a lot of work to try to rectify this. Uh, Robert Owen of New Lanark fame, for example, in, in 1816 wrote, the presence of trees is pleasant to the eye, refreshes the workers and improves the health of the district. Um, it took us 200 years until we actually picked up on it, what he said and thought, yes, actually trees are healthy. The Quakers also built a lot of settlements. Um, George Cadbury's Bourneville was perhaps one of the best ones. Um, and again, trees lined the streets um, and were very much part of the, the quality of, of life there. They also influenced a lot uh, and primarily influenced Ebenezer Howard's ideas for garden cities, Lettrus being the first one, uh, and as you can see, trees were very much part of that city. It also influenced the new towns. Um, I worked in Telford New Town for many years, and there's a lot of things that we did in the new towns that I think have been forgotten. For example, my first job when I went there was to estimate where the 60 degree, um, 60 decibel contour was from the main roads roads weren't very main at the time. You could picnic in some of them. There wasn't traffic there. It certainly is now. And by the time we actually set where that contour was, there was a gap of about 50 metres between the road and where we started building housing. That, of course, could be planted up with trees and was um, with cycleways and what have you. We sometimes need, I think, to, to revisit some of the work that the new towns did in this country. Other forms of urban areas, of course, where millions of people live are uh, in very densely packed in um, terraced houses. Um, these are not always the healthiest places, and we know that a awful lot of the COVID pandemic um, problems uh, have occurred in housing areas such as this. The compact city allegedly good we don't want to be spread out across the countryside higher residential densities mixture of land uses etc some problems however low open space ratio nature can be very thin on the ground trees viewed as a cosmetic the old light we enjoy landscaping things a word that should be removed from the dictionary and pure poor human health and well-being um, is very often a key aspect of such cities. It is very easy to draw um, amusing cartoons about this, but in fact, sometimes they're not that far away from reality. Car jams in China and in France, this happened to be between Lyon and Paris, um, they're not alone. These exist all over the place. Uh, and again, 
drawing um, amusing cartoons, but very often really schemes that are being drawn up now are not actually making progress. And this is something that I think urban forestry can help with. Leeds might have looked like it does on the left there, had all the buildings that were going through planning in 2007, 2008, before the financial crash that got built. They weren't, they won't be, um, but it would have looked very much like downtown Baltimore had there have been built. Manchester, of course, is currently um, developing a lot of, of tall buildings. And we know people who live in the shadow of such buildings do have great problems with, 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 with health, particularly mental health. So is contemporary urbanism really on the right track? I'm not sure at the moment that it is. Current human health issues in the city um, are a problem. Stress, mental stress, depressive disorders, lower respiratory infections, heart diseases, premature and low birth weights, birth asphyxia, neonatal infections, hearing loss, diabetes, cancers, especially from diesel fumes, and even longevity um, is being affected now, north versus south, uh, particularly for men who can actually now live 10 years longer if you live in some parts of the green south than you can in the industrial north. And this clearly is not acceptable. What are we doing to our kids? Kids roaming range has shrunk by 90% or more in the last generation. Time spent outside has shrunk by at least half. Short sightedness in kids is up by 15%. Spec savers are happy, but I'm not sure it's a good idea. 10% of the kids in this country are being diagnosed with mental health disorders, worst in Europe. There are over 1700 prescriptions a day for children under 18 for depression. One in 12 adolescents self-harm and 30% are overweight. The worst in Europe. Every year, our children in the UK are getting fatter and more disorientated. Uh, and this is primarily as a result of, of where they actually live. Again, you can draw all sorts of amusing cartoons, but it's quite a serious business. Risk factors of stress, loneliness, physical activity, um, needed. Interestingly, people from the countryside can cope better with stress, which is an interesting bit of research. Um, so urban forestry can help, but what is urban forestry? Well, I came up with a definition way back in 1999 that urban forestry is a transdisciplinary activity that encompasses the planning, design, establishment and management of trees, woodlands and associated flora and open space is usually physically linked to form a mosaic of vegetation in, near and around built up areas. It serves a range of multi-purpose functions, but is primarily for amenity, improving biodiversity and the promotion of human health and well-being. On the other hand, we always think that forests and forestry are about trees. And you could argue that hasn't always been the case. You could possibly say the word forest stems from the Latin word forest which means out of doors. Thus the urban forest is really the urban out of doors and includes the mosaic of all urban green space in and around our towns and cities. The new light that is beginning to be shone through the old windows with increasingly sophisticated research into urban forestry shows that it positively influences in many ways our lives and the places where we live, love, work and play. It improves our health and well-being. It improves children's learning abilities. It provides focal points to improve social cohesion, promotes inward investment and job creation and retention, increases property values, improves air quality, offsets carbon emissions, promotes biodiversity, can limit the risk of flooding. It cools our towns and cities, which is gonna be even more important, and it even makes us drive more safely. The Public Health published some years ago now, um, particulate air pollution, and it's rather small to see, but Leeds is at the bottom but one there. And if you live or work in Leeds city centre, about 350 people a year die prematurely because of a result of the air pollution. Not acceptable. Air pollution actually costs this country a lot of money. Even the government has said that by removing PM10s and PM2.5s, the particulates, 
it would have a bigger impact on human life expectancy um, than eliminating passive smoking or road traffic accidents. And it reckons that urban vegetation, especially trees, saved the NHS over a billion pounds um, in 2016, which is not an insignificant sum. So a few quick examples of the new light in action. We're looking a lot of work now with street uh, canyons. Um, tall buildings provide shade, so you don't always need to provide shade. But on the other hand, there can be a lot of particulate problems. But just wanging in trees either side might not be the answer. It could actually make matters worse by actually stopping natural ventilation. Uh, so there's a lot of work going on, on on size of trees, shapes of trees, density of trees, um, different trees to be put in different streets um, that actually will benefit the streets and not actually be a disbenefit. Sustainable urban drainage is very much part of the urban forest. Places like Malmo have absolutely done a superb job. So has Sheffield. And if you haven't visited their Greater Green Scheme, go and have a look at it. People from Malmo, Japan and various places in the world have visited it and said, wow, this really is really excellent. And it is. So well done, Sheffield. We've got to retrofit existing dense areas of housing um, because that's where so many people live. Ljubljana um, has hit on a great idea. They have very narrow streets like we do, but they actually purchase the end terraced house, knock it down and plant trees which they can do because all the party walls, of course, double walls in all their terraces. Elephant and Castle in London is going through similar revamping at the moment and hoping that they can do as good a job as Southwark has done, where they have greened an awful lot of the, the, the area um, without gentrifying it. Uh, and they've done that by actually using the community to do the work uh, and to do some of the design, which mm, as a designer, you may say, well, yeah, but they've done it, they live there, so that's all right. Urban forestry on the roof, a lot of work being done now on, on, on getting plants and trees on, on roofs. If you can't put it on the ground, put it on the roof, not a problem. Um, Stefano Borrei in Milan had trouble when he put his uh, trees on the vertical forest, Bosco Verticale. Um, he wasn't the first to do it. The Underwasser House in Vienna opened in 1986 and is smothered in trees. Um, and there have been a lot of, of um, copies, really, I suppose, of the, the towers in Milan. Uh, and if you come out of the station at Utrecht, which is the photograph on the right, turn left and wander down, you'll come across Wonderwoods. I know of a couple of dozen of projects like this which are being undertaken at the moment. Um, in Europe. China is taking urban forestry and urban greening very seriously. I have no idea whether a little town on the right hand side will be built like that, but they are planting millions of trees. In the three years between 2015 and 2017, Beijing planted 54 million trees in the ring forest around the city. Um, so things are going very well there. They are well aware of the value of urban forestry. The 20 minute neighbourhood is also being worked on at the moment on the basis that no one should be more than 10 minutes walk away from the basic um, stuff that they need for daily existence. Um, a lot of European cities are beginning to look at this. Melbourne has already said, yes, we're going to do it. And they, they've started doing it. And of course, the urban forest is very much part of that. We're also working on the 330, 300 concept. So everybody should be able to see three trees from the, from the windows of their habitation. Every city should be aiming for 30% tree cover, which they're going to need with the, the um, sun and, and the heat and everything else and climate change cuts in, which it is going to. And everyone should be within about 300 meters of a viable urban space. Um, and we will improve the health of our towns and cities if we do the 330, 300 concept. Possibly working on this, Mayfield Park in Manchester does not exist, but there are plans to, to do that. 
what will exist is city square in leeds which is going to have an awful lot of trees designed by reform and it won the competition um, and the glade will be a significant part of leeds when that is built so to conclude there are no more frontiers we have got to make it here and the mosaic of urban forestry is no longer a cosmetic it's a metaphysic, a first principle of building a better tomorrow. And new light in terms of research into action is beginning to shine through old windows to help to deliver this. And John Shaw was absolutely right when he said, the future is not some place we are going to, but one we are creating. The paths are not to be found, but made. And the activity of making them changes both the maker and the destination. Thank you for your attention. And if the work we can do is bring the smile back to that young lady, then we'll have done our job.